Now I want to give you some recent reports based on the current events taking place over in the Korean Peninsula, Russia, and Israel. Uh, senators, many of us know that senators, uh, 100 of the senators, of, of, of U.S. senators, met in a rare briefing at the White House yesterday, Wednesday, uh, from the President Trump's national security team on North Korea's nuclear program. Many were wondering why uh, did President Barack, or excuse me, why did Donald Trump invite all 100 U.S. senators? Is this a photo op because of his 100 days in office? Uh, but they dubbed it very unusual. Well, unusual is, uh, you know, it's probably not the word to use. Uh, how about sobering, alarming, and even important? We got, um, we received an update from uh, one of the senators, actually, I believe a couple of them, one of which is Senator Steve Daines, a Republican from Montana. He says, it was a sobering briefing, he tweeted. Uh, after the briefing hosted by Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, Defense Secretary Jim Mattis, and Director of National Intelligence Dan Coats, the President also briefly attended the event. Senator Marco Rubio also called the uh, meeting an important meeting. He says, and I quote, we will never accept North Korea as a legitimate nuclear weapons power. He tweeted that. Uh, we had another tweet from... Uh, let's see, I just told you about Steve Daines and Marco Rubio. Senator John Barrasso, a Republican from Wyoming, he said and told NBC News that North Korea's capacity is increasing and has increased significantly. Now, after the meeting, you had Rex Tillerson, Mattis, and Coates release a statement calling North Korea's pursuit of nuclear weapons, and I quote, an urgent national security threat and top foreign policy priority. Today, along with Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Joe Dunford, we briefed members of Congress on the review, they stated. The President's approach aims to pressure North Korea into dismantling its nuclear, ballistic missile, and proliferation programs by tightening economic sanctions and pursuing diplomatic measures with our allies and regional partners, which would include China. The statement said the administration is engaging responsible members of the international community. That is a veiled reference clearly to China. And that is to increase pressure on North Korea to de-escalate and return to the path of dialogue, unquote. The statement also emphasized that the U.S. favors diplomacy over military action, but added that it remained prepared to defend itself and other allies. Now, just weeks after Trump took office, North Korea test-fired a medium-range ballistic missile on February 11th. The regime then launched uh, four more ballistic missiles on March 6th, and then on April 5th, it launched another missile. The nuclear missile test, in defiance of international law, clearly shows progress in North Korea's illicit nuclear programs. Now, earlier this year, North Korea fired a missile using solid fuel, which makes it harder to detect before launch. North Korea's leader, Kim Jong-un, has vowed, folks, to obtain a nuclear weapon that can hit the U.S. mainland. And Trump has warned that it will not happen on his watch. The White House meeting was highly atypical. In the previous administration, the White House would often send senior would often send senior officials to Capitol Hill to brief lawmakers as opposed to inviting them to the White House. Now, while some critics argue that briefings were little more than a photo opportunity, others, including Senator David Perdue, which is a Republican over in Georgia, praised the White House for inviting both Democrats and Republicans to the briefing and for trying to engage with the senators. You have Senator Roger Wicker, a Republican from Mississippi, or Missouri, excuse me, after the meeting also praised the president, saying, and I quote, he deserves credit for updating the entire Senate. The administration's decision to hold this top secret briefing at the White House indicates the seriousness of the threat, he said in a statement. Senator Todd Young, Republican from Indiana, called North Korea a grave and urgent threat. And then the Democrats were more critical. You have Senator Ed Markey, a Democrat from Massachusetts, said on NBC News that it was heartening that there was more talk about diplomacy, but said it was in the context of more U.S. military exercises in the region and expressed concern about an accidental war. 
After the Senate meeting was announced, the White House decided to hold a briefing for members of the House, but over at the Capitol this time. Senators were bussed over to the briefing, which took place in the Eisenhower Executive Office building on the White House grounds. Now, the meeting occurred as the U.S. continued to deploy parts of a missile defense system to South Korea known as THAAD, and that stands for Terminal High Altitude Area Defense. U.S. Pacific Commander Command Admiral Harry Harris said earlier in the day that the system would be operational in the coming days. And then you have Senator Ted Cruz from Texas, a Republican from Texas, after the meeting tweet that it was time to relist North Korea as a state sponsor of terrorism, following a Reuters report saying that the administration was considering doing that very thing. Folks, I'm telling you, it's not looking any more tame. As a matter of fact, it's looking more intense with each hour that passes by. Also, North Korea has now turned to Southeast Asian nations for support in battle with U.S. to stop, and I quote, according to North Korea, a nuclear holocaust. North Korea has now appealed. They are virtually begging Southeast Asian countries for support in its role with the United States to prevent what it warned could be a nuclear holocaust. Please hear this, folks, because it's not that North Korea... I be, you know, we all say, you know, you have a dictator in charge in North Korea, he's paranoid, which we've made those claims here at Open Your Eyes People as well. He is paranoid. He's very troubled. Um, he is uh, 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 desperate even. Uh, we have had reports from defectors, high level, a very specific high level defector of North Korea that said that Kim Jong-un is willing to launch a nuclear strike against the U.S. and its allies and that he is very very desperate. Uh, so the fact that we are hearing now, listen folks, the fact that we're hearing from North Korea putting an appeal out to, to other Southeast Asian countries for support in order to prevent a nuclear holocaust shows how serious the situation is. Um, they uh, see our USS Carl Vinson over in the Korean Peninsula. They see our THAAD missile defense system over in South Korea. They're looking at the troops coming in from Russia and China. So they're very nervous. And they continue to put out their propaganda in hopes that that would calm the, the situation and maybe have U.S. move back. But see, the issue is, folks, is that we're not under an Obama administration anymore. We are under a Trump administration. We have a lot of gung-ho men and women, new fresh faces and, 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 and attitudes and ideologies that are seeking to make America great again, not just in America, not just among the American people, but around the world. So we're looking at a very unsafe, um, I, I don't want to call it a game of chicken, and I'm not going to call it bluffing, but we're looking at two cars going full speed ahead, and not one of them has their foot on the brake, and they're hoping that one will. Yeah, both parties are hoping that this will back down, but at the same time, they're willing to crash if need be. The concern is, of course, is that they're not the only two in the driver's seat. They have passengers in the vehicles, and that includes the citizens of both the U.S. and North Korea, and I will also include South Korea because South Korea, the capital of Seoul, specifically will be targeted in a nuclear attack from North Korea if, and I don't want to say when, but if it will or if it does go that route. Anyway, I want to tell you some more about North Korea's appeal now to the Southeast and the, the Southeast Asian countries. It says here in a letter to the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, you had the Secretary General of North Korean Foreign Minister Ri Yang Ho. So this is part of the regime of Kim Jong Un over in North Korea warned that the situation on the Korean Peninsula was, and I quote, reaching the brink of war. Now, of course, they're claiming it to be because of Washington's actions. Anyway, North Korea is currently urging the Asian, which is spelled A-S-E-A-N, which simply represents the Southeast Asian countries that form a 10-nation organization. Uh, they are now urging uh, this organization, the Asian chief, 
um, to, uh, you know, they're, they're warning them about the grave situation on the peninsula and now giving them a proper proposal while criticizing at length U.S. South Korean military exercises. Tensions have soared in the region in recent weeks, as we are all very aware of, in the wake of a series of North Korean uh, missile tests and tough rhetoric from both Washington and North Korea on the isolated nation's rogue weapons program. A copy of the North's letter dated March 23rd was obtained by the AFP on Thursday ahead of an Asian leader summit in Manila, where they are expected to discuss the situation on the peninsula. Now, according to... Uh, the letter, according to what was written, according to what was written in the letter, it says, I express my expectations. This is from the Kim Jong-un regime that the Asian organization, which attaches great importance to the regional peace and stability. There we go with that term, peace and safety. will make an issue of the U.S. South Korean joint military exercise at, at Asian conferences from the fair position and play. An active role in safeguarding the peace and safety, there you hear peace and safety again, of the Korean Peninsula. Who's touting peace and safety, folks? This letter comes in from North Korea to the, to the 10 organization Asian, uh, uh, you know, member, um, you know, members that they wrote the letter to. North Korea is concerned, deeply concerned, that this could go into a full-out war. And here they're touting peace and safety. And we know that the Bible says when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. Now, of course, in, 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 in the perspective or from the aspect of what Kim Jong-un is, is speaking, peace and safety is clearly stating that there is no peace and safety. And for the sake of peace and safety, have, you know, do your part to calm things down. Uh, you know, Asian members. Now, the Asian members do also include Cambodia and Laos. I'm not sure what, what, what leverage they're going to pull here. I'm not sure exactly what, what they can do to alleviate the situation at this present moment. Anyway, it says here, uh, the 10-member uh, organization named Asian has in the past spoken out against North Korea's nuclear ambitions in a statement released at the end of an Asian... Leader Summit in Laos just last year exp expressed serious concerns over North Korea's nuclear testing and called on it to abide by relevant United Nations Security Council resolutions meant to curtail its atomic program. Now, Rhee's letter appeared to be a highly unusual move. And it is, because again, this letter comes from the North Korean regime appealing to the 10-member organization called Asian to do their part to prevent a nuclear holocaust with the United States and other allied nations. A Southeast Asian diplomat said that as far as he could recall, it was the first time North Korea had written a letter seeking Asians help on the issue. Again, folks, this is, I believe, really expressing and exercising the dire situation that is currently at hand over in the Korean Peninsula, but will not just stay in the Korean Peninsula. It will drag the U.S. into an all-out nuclear war that will involve Russia and China. And you're going to have, I believe, other players that will just come out to play, and that will include Iran, possibly Saudi Arabia. We already got reports that Britain is being threatened to be wiped off the face of the earth because they have stated that they would be willing to launch a preemptive nuclear strike, which, 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 which caused the Russian foreign minister to speak out and say, if you even did launch a preemptive nuclear strike, Britain, you will be wiped off the face of the whole earth. You will be wiped off the, 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 the map. That's stunning. And I'm telling you, folks, I don't know how intense it could... I don't know. I don't want to know how intense it could get. Clearly, it could get more intense, and the intensity could bring forth a nuclear war. To continue watching this broadcast, please show your support by visiting our website, www.openyoureyespeople.com, and help keep us on the air by placing a donation today. P.O. Box... 9570 Rancho Cucamonga, California 91701 Until next week, may you be richly blessed.